what is going on you guys i hope you're all having an embraceful day hopefully you guys are able to hear me because of the noise of my car it's just so darn loud but i'm recording this on my phone because i forgot a battery on my camera and i'm on my way to go do something that i've been wanting to do for a couple months now i think it's been like about two months that i've been on the hunt so you guys will probably already know what's going on because of the title of this video i'm on my way to go pick up a german shepherd dog and it might come as a surprise for some of you but for those of you those of you that have been ogs i might have shown my old dogs like here and there sometimes i wish i would have showed them a lot more but i'll talk to you guys about that story a little bit more once we get back home and we get the dog um but for now i just want to go pick them up right now it's currently 5 56 right now i got out of work at 4 30 and i found the dog on craigslist i've been hunting for about two months already and um i don't know like dates wouldn't just match up like the dates wouldn't match up whenever i would find a dog on craigslist either i didn't have money enough to buy them or you know it just wasn't i didn't have time to go get them um or someone else would uh, end up buying the dog first than me or you had to make a deposit and i don't really want to make a deposit to save a dog um or like uh, put a, a hold on the dog so i found one today i was at as as I was at work, um, today was my payday, and it kind of just all lined up. Like, I found the dog, I got paid, so I was like, you know, it's it's adding up. Maybe it's it's time to get one. So, I mean, it's a long drive from here. I gotta drive all the way to Moreno Valley, so it's about two and a half hour drive from where I live. So I'll probably end up getting there like around maybe eight, like eight thirty ish. But we'll see. Um, I'm gonna get on the road. Hopefully, maybe speed a little bit so i can get up there a little bit quicker and like get back down and i don't know it's 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 I'm, I'm ready to have another dog in my life um like i said um i used to have two other dogs but i'll i'll, I'll explain to you guys the story once we get home and it's not as loud as it is right now so let's go pick up the dog guys so it's been about a week since i last picked up my brand new puppy as you guys can tell he's right here in my hands He's about to sleep. <laughs> it looks like he's about to sleep. I was playing with him all morning, so I'm pretty sure he's pretty beat. I ended up calling him Kodak. Yes, like the camera. Um, if you guys are familiar with the camera, it, it used to be one of those old ones that you had to put the film in there. And you would turn like the dial so you can take a picture. But yeah, it's that type of camera if you guys are wondering. So I called him Kodak. His name is Kodak. Oh, Kodak. His name is Kodak. Yeah, his name is Kodak. Um, and the reason I call him Kodak is, if you guys are familiar with the meaning of Kodak, it means taking a picture of something or someone, um, basically a picture of him or of it, whatever it is, um, that will never be forgotten. And he is going to be certainly someone that I'm never going to forget. I ended up picking him up, it's about a week later, I picked him up last Friday and it was a pretty heck, it's been a pretty hectic two past weekends. That's why I really haven't been able to get a video out for you guys the weekend before i picked him up i had a we made a church for my grandma since it was another year of her passing i think it's been her third year that she passed away we do a church for her on sunday so on saturday we had family come over then on sunday we had family come over as well in the morning ate some food and whatnot then the following weekend which is the weekend that i picked him up on friday um i got back Okay, so this this is the whole entire trip. I want to explain to you guys the trip, what happened and everything like that. So, I picked them up on Friday, right? I found them on Friday on Craigslist. I decided, oh, you know what? This is the one. I have the money. It's time to go pick them up. It's it's the right time and it, everything just lined up. So, I went to go pick them up on Friday. I left here. It was like around 5.30, I think. It was like 5.30ish when I left. 5.40ish, around there. Um, I ended up getting over there at like 8, it was exactly at 8.05 or something like that when we met like at a Sizzlers. I met Kodak for the first time there, he had a couple other puppies that were males, but Kodak really drew my attention. He was, he had like the physical, he had the physical characteristics of my old dog that I used to have, um, another German Shepherd that I used to have that I'll talk to you guys about, that I'll talk to you guys about a little bit later on down, but... Another reason why it took me a while to find a dog was because I was really particular on the dog that I wanted. Um, you know, I used to have another German Shepherd and I, I really loved them. I loved them a lot. I also, also had another pit bull that I really liked a lot. But from both of them, I think I drew more close to the German Shepherd. I loved them equally, but I felt more in love with the German Shepherd, So, which is why I got another German Shepherd. And as I was hunting for uh, German Shepherds on Craigslist, um, he 
kind of fit the characteristics of my old German Shepherd. So it drew a lot of connection, you know. And when I first got my other German Shepherd as well, he had his ears down as well. So I, I was really picky on finding a dog that had the ears down and didn't already have them up. So as you guys can tell, his ears are still down. Um, he looks beautiful like that. But he will be having them up pretty soon, I'm pretty sure. But I, that's what I was looking for. I wanted the paws to be brown like my old dog. I wanted the ears to be down. Also, right here on the front, like on his uh, his face, on the bottom, he has brown as well. My old dog, used to, Lobo, used to have that as well. Um, and then on his chest area right here, he has brown spots as well, exactly like my other German Shepherd had. His name was Lobo, by the way, my other German Shepherd. Um, so, he fit the characteristics. The time was right. The money was there. So, you know, I had to go pick him up. Um, so, I, I met him at Sizzlers, like I said. I got him there. Uh, after there I paid from um, I bought them for three hundred and fifty dollars with the shots and shots and uh, dewormed so I picked them up and then we started leaving that's it I put them on the first time I put them on the inside the car he just laid there he didn't even care about the noise or the sound or anything like that with the exhaust um, didn't really bother him he just went straight to sleep so knowing that I started driving and I knew I'm gonna have to pull over um, pretty soon because he he's pretty small he's gonna have to pee he has a small bladder um, so he, right before when I was looking for like a pit stop and whatnot he ends up peeing on my floor mat like he pees on my huh you peed on my floor mat huh so he peed on my floor mat which wasn't a really big deal it's not like he pees a lot or whatnot but he peed on there and then I was like okay when I picked him up it was like maybe 30 minutes after when he peed I think it was like 30 minutes after when he peed and I was like okay I'm gonna stop every hour and I'm gonna let him pee you know so I stopped I stopped like another two times like it was like 40 40 minutes I didn't even wait an hour um, because I saw him like stand up because he was always laying down the whole entire time so I saw him standing up and I was like maybe he needs to pee so I would just pull over wherever um, but I also got pulled over with C from the CHP up there in Moreno Valley um, I thought he was pulling me over for speeding because I think I was going like 75 I'm not sure but he pulled me over because I didn't have the orange sticker on my tags uh, for my license plate but he didn't give me a fix a ticket or anything like that he just told me to get it done because um, he actually got scared when he saw the dog when he saw uh, Kodak sitting down laying down because he pulled me over he was coming to my passenger side so I rolled down the windows I turned on the lights um, and he had his flashlight on him and I guess he noticed that I didn't have a seat which he seemed like it was pretty weird that I didn't have a seat so when he flashed us when he uh, turned on his flashlight to look at the floor he saw Kodak and he was like, oh man, like he got scared. And it was funny, I, um, I told him like my story. I drove two and a half hours to go pick him up and that's all I was doing because uh, he asked me what I was doing over here. Um, so, but he didn't give me a fixed ticket at all. But now driving, keep on driving down, pulling over, uh, letting him pee and whatnot, letting him poop. Um, I got home like around 12 o'clock in the morning. So I got, in the, got here in the morning um, I had to get the cage that was back here that we used to have from our old dogs where we used to have them. Um, and I put that in the garage. I put the cage in the garage. I made him like a little fort and whatnot so he can have more space than what the cage is. Um, kept him there in the night. And man, was he barking, crying. And what, well, it wasn't barking. He was mostly crying. Um, my room is the closest to the garage so I left the door open so you could hear him if he was crying he would cry like at least 30 minutes but I think he just really wanted the company because every time I would get out of bed to go with him like he would immediately like be quiet and lay down like he would go back to sleep so I kept on doing that back and forth for a couple hours I was like that's it I can't do it um, I had my old seat the seat that I took out of my car I had it in the garage I was like I put the seat there I sat down in the seat and I stayed there till the morning I think it was like six o'clock in the morning and he didn't make any noise after that because I was with him um, now coming Saturday um, it was my sister's birthday, so we did. We had like a family get together here. Also, it was her birthday, and she graduated as an RN. So we had like a big party here on Saturday. So I didn't really have time to film either on Saturday. So that Saturday was hectic because we had family here, had the dog. Um, I had I didn't have much sleep, um, and then after Saturday went. Saturday night he continued to cry well Saturday night we moved him to the back over here on the dirt we built him like a little fence and whatnot I bought him stuff um, and same thing he would get up cry get up and cry and 
like I kept on going back and forth, back and forth. This time I didn't really stay with them because I don't want him to get, I didn't want him to get accustomed to me, like, being there all the time, you know. So I let him cry for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, we kept him there. And then come Sunday morning, um, we had family come in the morning. So we had menudo in the morning. Since my sister's birthday party was on Saturday, they came over Sunday morning to have breakfast. Um, and I didn't really have time to film either. So it's been a pretty hectic last two weekends. And I haven't really had much time to film. But I'm filming now. I'm back to the schedule of filming at least a video a week. Hopefully start doing at least two a week. Um, but for sure once a week. Um, what else? Now I want to talk about my other two dogs that I used to have and um, why they passed away and why it took me so long. Well, not It didn't take me that long. It didn't take me a year to get another dog, but I, I, I don't know, like I really like the company of a dog. Hey buddy. What's up buddies? What's up buddies? Are you excited? You excited too, huh? Yeah. Basically, I had a pit bull that was mixed. I don't, we don't know what it was mixed with. My dad got it when he was at a shop or something like that, and then we brought him home. He was small, um, and we also got Lobo around the same time. But we got the pit bull first. Lobo was a German Shepherd. Uh, Pirate was the pit bull. We called him Pirate because he had a patch. Well, not a patch, but he had like a uh, birthmark on his eye. So we called him Pirate. Um, Lobo. He was German Shepherd. He looked like a lobo because, I mean, he looked like a wolf. But we but we had him for about 10 years before they passed away. And the pirate, he passed away on December 26th on my birthday um, due to having a tumor underneath his neck. It had happened like maybe six months, six months before he passed away. Um, he didn't pass away, but we had to put him down because when we took him to, well, six months before, we noticed that he started bleeding from his mouth, like he was just bleeding from his mouth. And then a couple months after, he started having like a big old ball right here. So we had concerns. We took him to the veterinarian, and they said that he had a tumor underneath his neck, and they couldn't do much for him. Uh, they couldn't remove it or anything like that because it was right underneath like his neck area. Um, he wasn't eating anymore. He wasn't uh, drinking water as much water anymore. And, you know, we didn't want him to suffer. I know there's some people that might say, oh, how could you do that? How could you put down a dog? But I think that was the best thing for us to do because, I mean, there wasn't much that we could do for him. So on December 26th, um, we took him to uh, a veterinarian place where they were going to put him down. And honestly, like, I don't know. Like, it's the hardest thing you could ever do. I remember taking them, and while we wait, I was playing with them outside for a little bit. And then when it came as time, um, we were there inside the room with them. We, we watched it all happen. They say that it keeps the dogs a lot calmer if you're in the room with them. So we decided to go in there. Um, so the veterinarian got the, sh the, the shot. Um, and he gave it to him when he when he first when she first put the shot in. No, it was a, it was a guy, um, the doctor, um, the veterinarian doctor, whatever. Um, he first put it in through his paw, so he puts it through his paw, and he, all he does is his last, like scream. Like he says one last scream, and then after that he just starts falling onto his knees and just putting his head down. You can see his heartbeat just like slowly stopped beating his eyes were like slowly closing like I wish none of you guys will ever go through that like it's, it's horrible hopefully none of you guys will ever go through that and if you have you understand you will understand but I think that was the best thing that was like we could have done for him there was nothing else we couldn't take it out he was just suffering so that was the only thing I think we could have done. Now that was in 2016. Now this year, 2017, um, my German Shepherd Lobo, um, he passed away on May 29th. And the way he passed away was three years prior to him passing away, at least three years I think, or two years. Um, I think it was two years. He started having like bowel movements, uh, problems. He started like just pooping out of nowhere. He started peeing, uh, peeing on himself, 
just laying there and just peeing, um, pooping wherever. And like I said, um, he just couldn't control his bowel movements anymore. And I think that really like messed him up. I know there's German Shepherds that have problems with like different things. Some of them have like eye problems. Some of them have hip problems. There's other things that can go on. Bowel movement problems. Um, but I've had them both for 10 years. Lobo was there for 10 years as well. Um, that's like the recommended uh, lifetime that a German Shepherd lives. Um, but on May 29, he passed away. Um, I was at work. I came back looking for him. And I called him. He didn't come. Usually when I call him, he comes. This time, he didn't come. So I continued calling his name, looking around. And I just couldn't find him. Um, I ended up finding him on our lemon tree back there. Just not breathing anymore. Um, his eyes were like... They were open, but he wasn't breathing. Um, so that's how we found out that he passed away. I guess, I don't know, he just couldn't anymore. So that's how Lobo passed away. Um, I just got home and he was just there, not breathing anymore. Um, when we uh, buried Pirate, we buried, him, we buried him on our backyard. When we took him to the veterinarian, they gave us a box. We put him in the box and we buried him right there. When we, we uh, when Lobo passed away, uh, same thing. Well, we didn't have a box, so uh, we wrapped them in like uh, we showered him first, and then we wrapped them in like uh, plastic, and then we put them exactly like on top of Pirate where we buried him. So it was pretty rough. Um, I don't know. Like, it sucks. Like, it's not something you ever want to go through. Like losing your dogs. Like they're your, your like best friends, your companions, and I don't wish that upon anybody. It sucks. It really sucks. So after living my life after my do my both dogs passing away, um, it just wasn't the same as having someone outside with you working. Like I wish I would have made a lot more memories with them. Um, video wise showing them on camera and whatnot i showed them here and there but i didn't show them as much as if i would have wanted um and i feel like i didn't give them that much of attention as i should have um i did give them the attention but i don't think i gave them enough that's how i feel so me feeling the need to want another dog another companion um like i said i started looking on craigslist i found kodak he was born on September 15th of 2017, picked him up on November 3rd of 2017, and here we are today. Kodak sleeping, me laying on the floor with them, but yeah, so cute. He's so cute. He already learned, um, he wouldn't eat, when I, when I got him, he wouldn't, I bought like a bag of solid food. He wasn't eating the solid food, um, but then I bought canned food. He started eating the canned food. Well, let me show you guys the canned food. This is the canned food that I'm feeding him. Um, right here, this one. And he likes it. Um, he doesn't complain about it. He don't complain about it. He eats it, so I'm, I'm pretty sure he doesn't complain about it. But now, I'm starting to throw in a little bit of regular food with the canned food. And he's eating it, so hopefully we'll be able to switch over to just the dry, hard food. I remember I used to feed my other dogs just pedigree stuff. Um, and it was the same food all the time, over and over and over. Of course, when we had like uh, carne asada or pollo asada at the house, we would give them some, some pieces of that, um, eat some meat, of course. And I don't know, I, I feel like I'm taking a different direction with Kodak here. This is a different brand. That I'm trying and this brand has like different type of flavors different stuff and and things like that um, So it's a lot more expensive this one than the pedigree stuff the pedigree I think is like $30 a bag This was like $50 a bag and the bag is a lot smaller. So He's definitely gonna be getting a lot better food um, Hopefully it's a lot better food. Hopefully he likes it. Hopefully he's a lot health healthier and he lives a long life um, What else? He's learned already to sit. If we, like, I bought him some training treats. Um, I feel like I want to train him a lot more. Pirate, pirate the German, the not German, the pit bull that I had. He was deaf, like he couldn't hear, so it was a lot harder to train him um, than Lobo. Lobo, I only like I didn't spend that much time training him. But he, I, I was able to teach him how to sit. That was the only thing that I taught him how to, no, actually, and how to, like, lay down on the floor. Um, 
but I still had to do like hand movements and stuff like that instead of just like saying it and him doing it I had to like do hand motions but with uh, Kodak here I've been like giving him a lot more time and he's learned how to sit and hopefully just train him a lot better and learn a lot more tricks and stuff like that um, he already learns how to he already knows how to sit um, he sits here and there um, but it is gonna take a lot more training um, for him to actually get it down perfectly and all the time. He still needs to learn how to uh, poop and pee in the back. Um, whenever I take him, he does end up pooping in the back. But when he pees, he pees like all over the place. He pees on the concrete, on the dirt, on the grass. Um, we want to focus on him peeing just on the back. Um, my other dogs used to pee everywhere as well. Except for on the concrete, they would just pee like on the trees and whatnot. My dad doesn't like him peeing on the trees. But if I'm able to like train him real good so he pees and poops everything on the back we'll be able to have him like all over the property um and the, the what i mean by that is my other dogs <clears throat> they used to be all over the property but bef after lobo uh the german shepherd got sick he couldn't control his bowel movements we ended up building this fence right here now this fence we built because we used to have it all open. All this was open, but we built it because he was pooping and peeing right here on the porch and it started to smell. The smell would go inside, so we built this fence for him. But my dad wants to do the same thing to Kodak and just keep him on the backyard from this fence all the way back. I mean, it's still a lot of property. It's a lot of property that he can hang out and have fun, but there's not that much grass, only around the trees a little bit, and there's a lot more grass in the front. But, but my dad promised me if I'm able to train him for him to pee on no trees, nothing like that, he pees in the back, he poops in the back, we'll be able to have these gates open for him to come out and him to be free roaming all over the house. So that's the goal. Hopefully I get him trained really good, really well. And if he poos and pees in the back, he'll be able to be all over the place. So hopefully I'm able to train him a lot better so I'm trying to spend a lot more time with him here and there but when he is sleeping like this because he does take a lot of uh, nap breaks um, I will be working on like uh, stuff for the car because I know I need to get back into it but he ha has been taking a lot of my time and I really enjoy my time that I'm having with him so hopefully you guys don't mind if you guys see uh, dog videos not dog videos but I mean him coming out on a lot of my car videos um, hopefully you guys enjoy that and I'll keep you guys up to date with him, uh, vaccines and stuff like that. But for now, that's where I'm going to end today's video, guys. Let me end it with Kodak right here. So that's where I'm going to end today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it was a little bit different, but he is going to be a big part of my life. And hopefully, he'll be a part of your guys'. Um, he's going to be coming out a lot on the channel, so I hope you guys enjoy that. But other than that, guys, thank you guys for your guys' support. It truly means a lot. Um, your guys' comments, whether they're good, bad, um, they all help, of course. And, you know, I wouldn't be here having fun if it wasn't for you guys. So, truly, thank you. Thank you to you guys. Um, we're, uh, we're coming close to 5,000 subscribers. Um, I'm still going to be giving away the lip, the free lip uh, for the FRS V1 Rocket Bunny Kit. I'm going to be giving that away at 5,000 subscribers. So, subscribe if you if you want to subscribe uh tell your friends um yeah but other than that guys thank you guys so much and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out and embrace yourself